Welcome back to Dell's DIY. In today's video, I'm gonna be installing a new dust collector, which I'm really excited about. What I'm actually gonna be installing is the 1250 CFM dust right wall mount dust collector from Rockler. And we're gonna be adding in 1250 CFM canister filter, which filters the dust down to one micron. In addition to upgrading the canister filter, on the dust collector. I'm also gonna be adding the Super Dust Deputy Cyclone Dust and Chip Separator. Uh, this will be sitting on top of this 30 gallon bucket. It filters down all the chips, gets uh, sucked up into this canister, and all of the remaining fine dust, dust that this does not collect um, goes into uh, the canister filter and gets caught there. That's what they mean by two-stage dust collection system. But for a small workshop, I think this is going to be plenty sufficient. I'm really excited to add it. So why don't we just jump right into it and get this baby installed. The motor assembly is heavy, weighing in around 50 pounds, and is required to be attached directly to 2x4 studs. Since my walls are finished, Rockler recommends using 2x4 cleats, which should span three studs. I mark the three stud locations using a stud finder and cut two cleats that span the three studs. I drilled a one inch counter bore with a Forstner bit to accommodate a washer and a lag bolt, then followed with the pilot hole drilled into the center for the lag bolt. Using the cleats, I've marked the location for the bolts on the wall since I'll be drilling a pilot hole into the studs. The lower cleat has to be exactly 12 inches below the top cleat. So I once again mark the lag bolt locations for the pilot holes in the wall. Now that I have everything marked out, I'm ready to drill out the pilot holes for the six lag bolts. Once everything is drilled, I can now install the cleats using my impact driver and four inch lag bolts into each of the three studs. Of course I needed to see if it would hold me and quickly realized I need to go to the gym because that pull up was rough. And why I decided I had to smack the cleat, I have absolutely no good explanation, but it is hysterical. And magically, the rest of the French cleat wall was completed. Go check out that other video, it's already posted online. But since this video is about installing the dust collector, I didn't want to go into detail on that. So now I'm drilling the pilot holes for the lag bolts that are going to be holding the dust collector motor to the wall. The motor will hang on three inch lag bolts and I leave them sticking out about an inch to help with mounting the motor. And then I follow up by putting these vibration dampers over the lag bolts. And finally, we get to mount the motor to the wall. And I will not recommend doing this on your own. If you have a second set of hands, go ahead and grab them. But you can see I'm gonna do this on my own. Um, luckily, everything worked out fine. They slipped right onto the bolts. And I was able to lock it down without any broken bones or broken equipment. And I was a little skeptical. I didn't really want to let go of the unit, um, but it, it held fine and it's been hanging now for months and no issues whatsoever. And yes, I did say months. I had a little bit of a video backlog going on over here, but I got it out and I really hope you guys enjoy it. The kit comes with some foam tape to wrap around the outlet, which is going to help create a nice airtight seal. Now, if I wasn't going to be using a canister filter, this is where you'd be attaching the bag that will collect all of the dust. But since I am using a canister filter, I put on the bracket that attaches the filter to the motor assembly. And 100%, this would have been a whole lot easier with a second set of hands as well. The screw holes that are on the filter, I would say they do line up with the bracket, but it is, it's a challenge. I think that there could be a possible better design on Rockler's part to make this fit in a little easier. You can see I'm really struggling here, but 
after a few minutes, I was able to get everything to sit right and get the filter attached to the motor assembly. The filter also comes with this paddle to help clean the filter of dust and debris, which is really nice. And the final step with this part of the assembly is to attach the dust bag with the metal clamp that came with the canister. And now we can move on to installing the dust separator. So the idea is every time that I have to empty the bin, I don't want to have to take this lid off and have this come with, and then it's just kind of hanging and I, I just don't want that. So what I think I want to do is create some kind of mount to this French cleat wall. And even if you don't have a French cleat wall, you can just make one cleat and do the same thing. But I'm thinking if I mount something like this, probably out here a little bit more, it'll be, sorry, that's my dog barking. It'll be some kind of shelf like right here that clamps onto the French cleat wall. And then a hose is going to run down into the bin. And since this is supported by the shelf, I can take the bin off, move it out. And this just stays uh, stationary. Just need to come up with a plan. And now that the hamster wheels are fired up, I take some rough measurements and get to cutting. In the next bunch of videos I release, you're gonna see me testing out this new track saw, which is made by Evolution Power Tools. I really wanna see how this performs and if it could possibly take the place of a plunge cut track saw for those of you that want a more affordable option as this comes in at about a quarter of the cost of the cheapest track saw using my discount code. And I will say, I'm pretty impressed. I'll put a link down to the saw in the description so you guys can go check it out for yourselves. And keep an eye out for future videos as I'm gonna compare head to head with my plunge cut track saw. I'm using glue and pocket holes for the entire assembly. And here I'm working on the back piece which will attach the cleat to the shelf. I mentioned this before, I had no plans for this. I'm literally just drawing this as I'm going along, trying to come up with something that'll look decent, but also provide the structural support that I need to make sure that the shelf does not collapse underneath the weight of the cyclone. And this is what I'm coming up with. If you have never used a paint can for uh, rounded corners, I highly recommend that trick. I use double stick tape to stick the two sides together. So when I make the cuts, I get two of the exact pieces together. And using this extremely underpowered bandsaw, I'm cutting them out roughly uh, along the lines and will clean them up with my oscillating sander to finish them off. And in all honesty, this bandsaw is perfect for a hobbyist. It's not gonna be resawing maple or walnut, but if you're in the market for a cheap bandsaw, look into it, it does the trick. And before attaching the sides, I wanted to make sure I cut out the opening for the, the dust separator. The sides would definitely get in the way when trying to use a jigsaw, so do that first. And why not add a little more visual appeal by rounding out the corners and just making it look a little more custom than sharp 90 degree corners on the front. I'm using these six inch duct flanges to attach the dust collection hoses to and simply just using a little CA glue just to hold it before attaching the rest of the cyclone separator to it. I marked out all of the locations of the screw holes on the dust deputy and I'm drilling out, I believe it's a quarter inch hole, which will run uh, a quarter inch bolt down with a nut. And finally, I'm able to connect the sides to the base. And to do that, I'm using tight bond glue and some 18 gauge brad nails. And I'm gonna follow up with some trim head screws to give it a little extra strength as well.
Before attaching the dust deputy, I'm using some uh, small weather stripping around the outside. And I just wanna make sure it's as airtight as possible. I don't wanna lose any suction. I also don't wanna have dust shooting out from the base. And a simple thin weather stripping will be a, a great solution here. And using the bolts and the nuts that come with the dust deputy, I fasten it down nice and tight. And the moment of truth, will it be a colossal flop and fall off the wall and break into a million pieces? No. Works out great. Super strong. Really happy with how it turned out. To connect the dust deputy to the dust collector, I'm using a six inch hose and a simple hose clamp. Next, I need to attach the super dust deputy to my bin. So what I'm gonna do instead of using quarter inch foam weather stripping, um, I'm still gonna insert this from the bottom. So this is gonna come up through the top. I'm gonna to add a bead of silicone around the inside and then also around the top, around the outside, make it completely airtight. And I think that's gonna be fine. First, I need to make a hole into the top of the lid. So I trace the diameter of the circle, make a starting hole and cut it out. I probably should wash this bin out. This was a uh, previously used for uh, pharmaceuticals and it looks like this was completely full. 5,000 kilograms of nepr naproxen sodium. I think it's a leave. It stinks though. <laughs> I probably should wash this out. This 30 gallon bin I actually found on Facebook Marketplace. I think I paid $15 for it. And what I love about it is that it actually has handles on the side. So when I need to go empty it out, all I have to do is grab the handles and dump it into a bag. And since it was used as a pharmaceutical storage bin, uh, it is completely airtight. So keep an eye out for those and grab them when you see them. All right, so now I'm just doing a quick test fit before I drill out the holes for the bolt and the, the nut that's going to be holding this in place. And then uh, I scuffed up the red uh, top where I'm putting the silicone just to give it something to bite into. I'm putting a generous amount of silicone here. I want it to be nice and airtight. I squeeze this down and proceed with installing the, the bolts and the nuts. Once I smoothed out the bottom and, and filled in any open gaps with silicone, I added a bead around the top. And to finish off the installation, I used the remainder six inch dust collection hose that I used at the top and cut it down to size and then attached it to the bottom of the cyclone and the top of the bin using standard hose clamps. And here it is looking all pretty. Really happy with how it turned out. Well, we got everything set up and I am really excited to give it a shot. So um, I have turned this on already. And the first thing I notice is how much quieter it is compared to my shop vac setup. And that gave me an idea. We're just gonna do a, a really quick uh, decibel test between the two. My corner of my workbench is located right in the middle of the two units right now. We're gonna see if this really is quieter or if it's just a different sound. And once we do that, I'm gonna hook up a hose and we're gonna put the two stage collection to the test. All right, we are gonna start off with the new unit we just installed. You can see the meter is going uh, right now, normal talking level is 68 to 70. Press the button and let's see where we go. 
All right, that one was sitting steadily at 85 decibels. And now let's turn on the shop vac. There you have it. I was completely wrong. It's just a different sound. It's a little lower pitch sound than uh, the dust or than the shop vac. Um, this one was at 83, 84 decibels. Uh, the dust right uh, wall mount collector was at 85 decibels. So pretty much the same, but definitely not uh, super quieter like like I thought. Just a different pitch. All right, we're just gonna make a huge mess. I just did a little um, walnut template work. Got plenty of sawdust. You know what? We're not messing around. Let's see how this works here. So for those of you that don't understand what a uh, two-stage dust collector does, and why you might want one in your shop. I'll just do a very quick summary of, of the importance of them and why I think they're a benefit for my shop. A, a single stage dust collector would, ha would not have this section right here with the cyclone and the dust bin. The hose that you would use to hook up to your, uh, your tools or vacuuming your floor would go directly to the dust collector all of the debris, the wood chips, everything will go through the filter and down into the bag at the bottom. The bag is then what you would empty out when it fills up. The two-stage dust collector, the hose that goes to your tools goes directly into the um, super, dust up, super Dust Deputy. And what happens, um, the vacuum hose, which is creating the suction, goes into the top here. and this is creating a cyclone. And what that does is the dust and chips, all the wood debris will go into, into the separator and spiral down and go into the dust bin, okay? The only material that will make it through into the dust collector and through the filter and into the bag is gonna be that very fine dust. So it's all the fine dust that's floating around in here that uh, just couldn't settle down to the bottom. And the huge benefit of that is these filters clog up. They clog up pretty quickly. And if you have all the majority of the material being filtered out into this system first, only the fine dust is going in here and falling to the bottom. Now I haven't vacuumed yet. Uh, I just dumped a whole bunch of this sawdust on the ground. We're gonna show you that right now. If everything is working properly, you're gonna see very minimal amount going into this bag here. And when I open up the top here, it should be uh, you know, 95% of the dust. So let's see if I'm right. As you can see here, we have some, we have some walnut, some plywood, some chips, some plastic. Um, you obviously do not want any metal uh, to be sucked up into your dust collector. And so I don't see any metal. Let's give it a try. I think it is safe to say the cyclone did its job. I'm gonna get you as close as possible because this worked better than even I thought it was gonna work. You can see what made it into the bag, kind of. It's just that little tiny bit of dust in there. Barely any. Since this is a new filter, let's just brush off the filter by turning this thing. 
nothing. Absolutely nothing. Oh, that makes me so happy. Now let's open up the bin and check it out. Now I think you fully understand why I wanted to do this setup with the hose here, because when you go to empty it, I don't have to detach anything except my lid. There it is. It's all in the bin. I am so happy, guys. I You don't even understand. Like I said, I don't have any issues with uh, the mobile dust cart. I'm still going to be having that permanently in the shop. It's going to be hooked up to the miter saw, and it's going to be hooked up to smaller tools, so I don't have to use um, a four-inch to two-and-a-half-inch reducer on all the small tools. But this thing is a beast. Um, I am so happy with it. I highly recommend it. Um, if you're lucky enough, check it out on like a Black Friday or a Christmas type of holiday sale. Um, they do come down quite a bit in price um, if you catch it at the right time. So if you guys like the video, please, the best way to support my channel and support me is to like and subscribe to this video. And also, if you like this French cleat wall, go check out that build video. Uh, we just posted it and... And we're building uh, all of the holders, so stick around. We're going to have a lot of cool stuff coming up. Thank you for watching, and we will catch you on the next video. Thanks. Take care.